We will now hear from the Son of Man. In the name of Allah, who appeared and is in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. That's all I like. Can everyone hear my um, my voice clearly? Yes, sir. That's good. I um, amazing how a lot of work. Just, I mean, I, I think it was within 45 seconds or maybe a minute. Of Sister Rebecca, uh, not even a minute, maybe about 30 seconds. Within 30 sec, within 30 seconds of Sister Rebecca. Uh, finishing her uh, reading is when I stepped out the oil field, back in the truck, and, and I'm in I'm, and I'm in the truck. I mean, you know, the, the timing couldn't have been more more perfect. You know, because yes, had sir. I not um, had I had I still been out out in the field, I don't think it may have been possible that I would not speak. But um. You know, so I, I suppose a lot has has different plans. Um, I think I didn't catch the guest name. I, I couldn't hear. Um, Rafi, what's the, what is the guest name that that's here? Actually, sure, I couldn't hear either. The most I can make out was that I could she, tell you. I could tell you all who who she is. She's uh my niece's mother, and her name is Francine Lewis. And she's from oh, uh, Miss, California. Miss uh, Lewis, we'd like to welcome you uh, to our Friday night Bible study, and we're very honored uh, that you have decided to spend time with us this evening. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, and I'm glad to be part of your study. I really got a lot out of this. I mean, it's my first time ever listening, but I found it enlightening. And confirmation. Oh, okay, but I got a lot of confirmation hey, too. Hey, so I'm, hey. I'm about to speak. I'm about to speak. It's not over. Oh, oh, we get ready to get to the good part, then, huh? Well, I'm gonna shut up. So I, <laughs> cause I need to hear. Yes, I just, I just want to uh, extend. My personal welcome. I generally don't do that. Generally, when my son, uh, Mr. Rafi, gives me an introduction, I begin teaching. But based on the based on the fact that uh, you are uh, Sister Rebecca's near pen, I, I, I'm honoring you by giving you special special mention before I speak, because uh, oh, Sister Rebecca is, is a dear Sister Rebecca is a dear follower and a, and a faithful believer in our life. And I have the greatest respect for Sister Rebecca. And she's been telling so me forever. <laughs> so anytime Sister Rebecca's near can come, you know, they have a they have a special place in my heart because, you know, Sister Rebecca is a truly special sister and a gift from a lot to us all. Mhm. Yes, she now, is. Um generally Generally on Friday night, you know the ma the major lectures come on Sunday, and typically on Friday night we just it's it's a it's it's, it's a Bible study of sorts, and we read the teachings of the most Hon- the, the direct teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and you know sometimes I don't even speak because it's just a, a, a Friday meeting, but lately. Uh, it, it appears that whenever I um, I speak on Friday, uh, it turns out to be uh, a requested upload to YouTube by my son Rafi. Sometimes, you know, the others. Um, but due to the fact we do have a guest, and it depends on how the spirit of Allah moved me to speak, I, I do want to say these words. It is get it is getting late. It is 2019, mm-hmm. and I guess I'll start. I guess I'll start by saying this: It's political. We are taught in Islam that our slavery in this country began in the year 1555 by the 
by the white man named Sir John Hawkins of England. Um, yet this country says officially that our slavery began in 1619, and the world recognizes that the black man and woman in America, their slavery began in 1619, although the history of our people as given to us by Master Quran Muhammad, Allah in person, says it was 1555. So that's approximately 45, that's approximately 64 years of our history that the white people have hidden. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yeah. 64 years. 64 mm-hmm. years. That's three generations. So three generations yep. of, of black slaves in this country, the white man fought to e- erase them out of history. And, that's a, and when you think about the, the gravity of such a thing, to, to not only deprive a man of freedom, justice, and equality and make him a slave, then you write him out of history as if he never existed. That is a that is what you will call total annihilation. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. But Allah, but Allah being the all-knowing and perfect God, did not allow the devil or the white people to totally annihilate our slavery. Because in the book of Genesis, chapter Rafiq, turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 15. Got it. Um, read the 12th verse. I hope I, now, I hope I quoted it right, because I'm literally behind, I'm in my rig driving in the rain. I believe it's 15 and 12. Read the 12th verse. When the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Read the next verse. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Keep reading. And also that next nation. Verse. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Now, according to the book of Genesis, God, the um, Abraham's children, Abraham's seed to another nation for 400 years. Is that right? Yes, sir. Notice that the Bible did not say that Abraham's seed, their memory shall be annihilated, and said his seed shall be enslaved. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes. So although the white man was operating with, within the confines of the then will of God that we do go in slavery, he was he is unable to go outside of what God allows him to do. He was allowed to enslave us for 400 years because it was God's word. It was God's prophecy. But it was not God's word that he would annihilate the memory of our people. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So upon the coming of Master Muhammad in 1930, he revealed to on. us, upon the coming of Master Muhammad, a long person in 1930, he revealed that our slavery did not start in 1619, but it started three generations before in 1555. Do you understand? Yes, sir. But it's political. This is this is 2019. This is the year by which America and the world recognizes that the black man has been in this in this country for 400 years. And it is written, or it is also said of God, that the wicked as well as the righteous shall be judged out of their own book. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yep. So out of his own mouth, his judgment shall come for him. That's why you see America in judgment. That's why there are rivers and oceans in mid-America. 
That's why there's no crops being grown in this country. That's why hurricanes are forming on the land in America and not on the sea. That's why there's heat in the west in New Mexico and Arizona and ice cold snow on the east in the month of May. Do you mm-hmm. understand? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. This is the judgment. Read the 13th verse, Rafiq, of, of Genesis chapter 15 again. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Now, if Allah, if God, if Jehovah would have come in 1955, from 1555 to 1955 is four hundred years. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yep. But because Satan, as written in the book of Revelation, deceived the whole world, if God would have brought his judgment in 1955, Satan could have cried and the world would have wondered if God is judging America for what they did to black people, it has not been 400 years. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Hmm. Hmm. And, for the, and for their cry and my America a chance to repent. God will judge them out of their own mouth like he like Jehovah judged Pharaoh out of his. Isn't that right? Yes sir. yes, sir. This is 2019. And America is an obvious judgment. The dollar isn't worth anything. The stock market is daily crashing. The the storms and the weather is in America from sea to sand and sea, and from the Gulf, and from the North. See the <laughs> trip of the yeah. year 2019. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Daim, yes, Daim, is there anything as we know as of a coincidence? Do coincidences exist, Daim? No. Could you repeat that? Is there any such thing as a coincidence? No, sir. No. If if we were enslaved, we would take the white man at his word. If we were enslaved, and we were since 1619, that means that the year 2019 is the official year, the official 400th year of our slavery to the Can you hear me? Oh, I just cut out for the week here now. Am I am I breaking up? Not anymore. Yes, you are. How about now? No, sir. No, sir. Better. Um, Better. I, I, I don't think I let me remember. I forgot the hold on. I got cut out. It's a it's a storm. You know, this is the second time today. Every time I um, every time I I'm outside of my truck, and I'm doing something. The wind and the rain come. But the sec I mean, within a minute or two of me getting inside this rig, it, it rains cats and dogs. And, I was, and, I had, and I'm in the oil field. I got to be outside. But the moment I get in the truck and start teaching the word of God, that's when God brings the rain. <laughs> now, it is 2019, so we know if we are believers in the word of God, and we are, that it is no coincidence that America is in trouble in the year 2019. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Now, but what happened? What happened in Egypt 2,000, 4,000 years ago? Well, we just had a black president by the name of Barack Hussein Obama, who was elected to office in the year 2008. Is that right? Yes, sir. President Obama, in his first term in office, took a presidential trip to the land of Egypt in Africa. Do you understand? Yes, sir. sir. And they have it on film with the Associated Press. You can get on YouTube or Google and look at this. 
when President Barack Obama talked to the top expert in Egypt on Egyptian archaeology. President Obama asked him about the children of Israel and their enslavement. The leading archaeologist in Egypt, in ancient Egypt, in Egypt today, Zawi Hawa, told President Barack Obama, the first black president of this nation, that the story of the children of Israel being enslaved in Egypt is a myth. It never happened. That is a Bible story. It is a myth. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But can we make the word of God a lie? If the word of God no. said a people was enslaved in Egypt for 400 years, then we don't take the word of man. We take the word of God. Ain't that right? Yes, That's right. right. Yes, so we got to reconcile. We got to reconcile this. We got to. We got the leading archaeologists in Egypt or Egyptian history saying to the world that no white men, no white Jews were enslaved by black people four thousand years ago. But it's written in the Bible. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, if God said it, that means. Whether it's today or tomorrow, it done, it, as far as God's concerned, as far as we the believers are concerned, honey, it done already happened. You you can just go to the bank on it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so what we read of in the book of Exodus concerning the history of the children of Israel being enslaved in Egypt, it is not history. It is prophecy. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Because you can't make the word of God a lie. No, the children of it, there were no Jews. And not only did the archaeologists tell Barack Obama the Jews 2,000 years ago told that the Jesus face 2,000 years ago. When I think turn to the eighth, eighth chapter of the book of John. Okay, what happened? My phone got okay. quiet. Sir? Hello? Turn to the eighth chapter of the book of John. Sir, can you say the chapter one more time? Chapter 8. Got it. Go to the 32nd verse and read the read read verse 32 through 45. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answer him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou? Stop, 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 stop right there. What did the Jews did tell Jesus? What did, what, they say they the, they Abraham's descendant, seed of Abraham, but what did they? What else did they just tell Jesus? Um, we were never in bondage to any man. Ain't that yes, right? Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Now, that's not what <laughs> Minister Kevin Muhammad said. That's not something I made up. That is in the Bible. That is in the Word of God. Not only that, they told that to Jesus' face. Yes, and sir. if you read the rest of that chapter, Jesus didn't say they were lying. If you keep reading that chapter, Jesus agreed with them. Do you understand? Yes, sir. He said, yeah, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. This Abraham did not do. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? You're breaking up, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, You're the, the, the up, Jews... Sir. Hold on. 
I'm almost I'm almost in a place where it won't break up. Am I clear yet? Is, is my voice clear yet? <laughs> or is it or is it still is it still static in the line? It's clear. Is it clear? Yes, so, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus told the Jews, I'm not going to have you read. I'm just going to tell. It's right there. Jesus told the Jews, he said, yeah, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth. This did not Abraham. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. sir. Now, my question to you all is this. Remember, if you've been going to church any amount of time and you read the gospel, you know that the Jews were constantly following Jesus, trying to catch him in a lie. Jesus spent the the, the most of his mission arguing with the scribes and Pharisees. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, it is. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is four books of Jesus basically arguing with Jews about the truth of God. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. So if this is the nature of the relationship between Jew, Jesus and the Jews, when the Jews told Jesus, we were never slaves to any man, why didn't Jesus tell them, yes, you were, it's written in the book of Exodus, y'all were slaves. Why didn't Jesus call them out? Why didn't your pastor never ask you this in church? Tell the Jews, no, you're lying. It's the word of God that you were enslaved. Jesus didn't say a word about that. And this no, is 2,000 sure years didn't. ago. We are 4,000 years removed from that time. Jesus was back here 2,000 years ago. So if anybody knows the truth, Jesus and the Jews knew it 2,000 years ago. They were, they were, they were 2,000 years ahead of us. So if that happened... Surely the Jews and Jesus would know it. Ain't that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. So the Jews just told Jesus in the 33rd verse that we were never slaves. Ain't that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. So that means that the story in the book of Exodus is prophecy. That means that the Egypt in the book of Exodus is a Metaphor is symbolic of a future Egypt. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Because you cannot make the word of God a lie. So if Abraham's seed was enslaved for 400 years in a country called Egypt, and it never happened, then that's a prophetic Egypt of the future. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My feet turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 11. Got it. Read the eighth verse. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, I got a question. Now, we got some heavyweights in here. Because if this sister on the line is related to Sister Rebecca, I know she's been to church because Sister Rebecca was raised in the church. Hello. So I know. I know these. I know these two sisters know the answer to this question. I'm about to ask. Where was Jesus? Where was Jesus crucified? I know y'all know. Where was Jesus crucified? Where was he crucified? Where was he crucified at? Oh Lord, have mercy! Am I going to do this wrong? Would I say Jerusalem? Jerusalem? Was it was it not Jerusalem? That's yes, what sir. I think. It was Jerusalem on the, yeah. on a hill called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Ain't that right? Yes, the the head of skulls. Yes, sir. So Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. Ain't that right? Yes, yes yeah. sir. Now, ain't now that's the word of God, so we know that happened. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Right. Do not the do not the Christians call Jesus my Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Yes. So where was the Christians Lord and Savior 
crucified at 2,000 years ago. In Jerusalem. Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rafiq, read the eighth verse again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Wait a minute. I thought our Lord was Jesus Christ. Well, if our Lord is Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was not crucified in Egypt. Jesus was not crucified in Sodom. Ain't that right? No, sir. He sure wasn't. Now, the Bible in the 8th verse of the 11th chapter of the book of Revelation said that the city is spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. Ain't that right? Uh, Yes, sir. Well, that means that the city where the Lord was crucified, if it's spiritually called this, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. When I was, and I grew up as a Christian child. The first church I, I went to in Detroit, Michigan, was called the Golden Key Prayer Temple of Deliverance. And this practice I'm about to mention to you was happens a lot. And well, I can't speak today because I ain't been to the church today. But I'm talking about that old time religion. I'm talking about that old. I'm talking about classic old black Christians. In the black church, many of us was given spiritual names. Some of us will be given the name Michael. Some were given the name Joseph and Mary. We had biblical names that the pastor would call our spiritual name. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when I was a little boy in the church, Evangelist Rodgers looked at me, and she said, Kevin, your spiritual name is David. That's the name okay. I, I was given, actually, the, the Jewish star David. But in the in the Christian church, my 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 scriptural name, my spiritual name was David. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, now we all know my name ain't David. Sister Rebecca, did you tell your sister here that my name David? Did you tell my name is Yakub or Kevin? Told her your name is Yakub. Right. So yes. if, if 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 someone calls me David in spirit, that means that I must have some of the qualities or attributes or characteristics of the man named David. Ain't that right? Yes, that's sir. right. It's just like when you was growing up, when you when, in, back when you were a teenager, and if a brother can really sing, and you, you may say he something like, David. boy, he <laughs> sounds like <laughs> Sam <laughs> Cook. Or boy, okay. that's David Isaac, <laughs> David Isaac, David Isaac yes, Hayes. Yes, ain't, ain't that right? Yeah, that's sir. right, but that's who David was, right? Minister of music. Right. So, but so when you call somebody when you call somebody by another name or somebody else, you do that because that name describe they act like him. Like you may see somebody dancing and you say, Boy, that go little Michael Jackson. That brother so can dance. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. <laughs> the reason why he is called Michael Jackson is because he has similar qualities to Michael Jackson. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about Jerusalem 2,000 years ago where Jesus was crucified. Now, did God rain fire and brimstone on Jerusalem because Jerusalem was full of homosexuals? Did God no. rain fire and brimstone on Jerusalem? He didn't. No, he didn't sir. burn no. Jerusalem, did he? No, he right? didn't. Okay. Well, we that means that spiritually, the the city of Jerusalem we can't call that we can't call Jerusalem Sodom because they were not doing that in Jerusalem in Jesus' day. Is that right? No. Nope, that was Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. All right, let's keep talking about it. Now, in Jerusalem, did Jerusalem during Jesus' day have slaves in the country of Jerusalem who were slaves in Jerusalem for 400 years when Jesus was there? 
No, no sir. There were slaves. There were but slaves. Did, but, did, but did Jerusalem have slaves? Did Jerusalem have an enslaved people for 400 years? No, sir. That I can't. No, they didn't. I'm sorry? No. No, they I did not. I can't is it, is it, no. Ma'am? I'm listening. So Jerusalem did not have any slaves 400 years, that was uh, 2,000 years ago, that were in bondage to the, to the people of Jerusalem for 400 years. Is that right? Yes, yes sir. Gotcha. Right, right. So that, You're me- right. So that means... That means that we cannot call Jerusalem Egypt because it's nothing like Egypt. Isn't that right? Nothing like it. That's right. That's right. right. Rafiq, read the eighth verse of the eleventh chapter again, son. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, I have a question. Is the word of God the truth or is the word of God a lie? The truth. The truth. Okay, well, the word of God said that our Lord was crucified in a city spiritually similar to Sodom and Egypt. The book of Revelation did not say that our Lord was crucified in Jerusalem. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh oh. Well, 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 well. What do we have here? What do we have here? We we have a we have a problem to solve. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Because if the Bible say if the Bible say that the Lord was crucified in a city that is spiritually known as Sodom in Egypt, or if our Lord was crucified in a city that was just like Sodom and just like Egypt, we got two problems. Because, number one, Jesus was not crucified in no city like that. And number two, the book of Revelation calls this person that was crucified in a city like that, it calls him Lord. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. So therefore, now you stop me if I'm wrong. Jeez. If the word of God, if the word of God is true, and it is, that means that the Book of Revelation is talking about the crucifixion of another Lord in another city. Ain't that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, I'm teaching tonight. You ain't never heard this in church, but this is in the Bible. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So here, now the book of Revelation is a book of what? Prophecy. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So that means, according to the book of Revelation, in the future, there's going to be a Lord that's going to be crucified in a place spiritually called Egypt and Sodom. Sound like America to me. <laughs> so, 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 pull, out, pull out a dollar bill. It says pull sound out like American, America. Pull out an American one dollar bill. <laughs> what do you yeah. see on the back of the American one dollar bill? Hmm. Hmm. A pyramid. Ain't that right? Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. You see a pyramid, don't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, you see a pyramid. That's <laughs> Egyptian, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, what a coincidence, Dain. The country of America got currency or money that looks Egyptian. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. The root, root of all evil. <laughs> and, guess, and, and guess what? America is a country where sodomy or homosexuality is legal. And homosexuals have power and rights in America, just like Sodom. Ain't that right? 
Yes, and America just happens to be a country where you have a people that was enslaved for I'm 400 years. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm teaching. One moment. Did she get a little bit of that All right. Okay. One moment. Can every can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, do you are you aware that black people are the only people on planet Earth that has a history of being enslaved to another people for four hundred years? Not not we don't need archaeology. It's not ancient. It's it is called history. It's a fact. There's nothing to even argue about. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we all know God, we all know black people is God's people. Ain't no ain't no more ain't no ain't no people on this planet that worship God more than black people. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So when we read so when we read the book of Revelation and it says that our Lord was crucified in a place spiritually known as Sodom in Egypt, we know, one moment, one second here. All right, here we go. Now you have my full attention. We know According to, I remember there's a, um, back, I mean, I, I like watching old, I listen to a lot of classic movies, I mean, classic music, and watch classic uh, movies. And uh, there was this, uh, I forget what film it was, but there was a film with the, uh, with a comedian named Flip Wilson. And Flip Wilson had a church. And his the name of Flip Wilson's church, was, he called it the church of what's happening now. Ain't that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. <laughs> so this, so this, you, you at the temple, you at, you at Allah's temple, you at Muhammad's temple of what's happening now. Not what's happening yesterday, what's happening right now. Ain't that right? Right now. Yes, mm-hmm. All right. So we know the book of Revelation is prophecy. So the book of Revelation, chapter 8, verse, chapter 11, verse 8 says that our Lord, was crucified in a place spiritually known as Sodom in Egypt. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. And we know that the prophecy says that the seed of Abraham, was not Abraham known as the friend of God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we know that the children of Abraham or the children of Israel are the chosen people. Ain't that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. So the Bible tells us how to determine who the chosen people are. The Holy, the Bible says that the chosen people of God, that God's choice, those people would be slaves for 400 years. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Well, if you deny or if it can be proven that you were never a slave to anyone for 400 years, you have just proven that you are not the people of God. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. sir. (laughs) So by the Jews' own admission, in John chapter 8, verse 33, they just told Jesus that we are not the children of God. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. That's what they said. Yes, sir. And if you and if you're not the children of God, 
Now we know why Jesus didn't argue with them when they told him that we weren't no slaves because Jesus was wiser than any man on earth at the time. Jesus hmm. was very wise. He didn't even argue about it. You know what Jesus did? He said, oh, so you weren't a slave for 400 years. You have just proven that you are not the children of God. And if you are not the children of God, well, read the 44th verse of the 8th chapter. And tell me what Jesus told them lying Jews. What did Jesus tell them Jews in the 44th verse of the 8th chapter of John? What did he tell them? Oh, 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. What did he tell them, Rafi? Uh, your father is the devil, and you do exactly what he wants. He has always been a murderer and a liar. There is nothing truthful about him. He speaks on his own, and everything he says is a lie. Not only is he a liar himself, but he is also the father of all lies. So Jesus told the Jews in the 44th verse that, yeah, I know you ain't the children of God because you are devils. Ain't that right? You're the devil. Yes, You're sir. the devil's children. You're the devil's now, children. That's a court. Now, is that my opinion or is that the word of God? No, the word, that's the word of God. The word that's of God the word actually of God. says the devil so goes to church. So according to Jesus, these white folks ain't nothing but a bunch of devils. Jesus said it long before the Muslims said it in America. Jesus said it 2,000 years ago that y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of devils. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So why in the world black people in this country get mad at the Muslims for saying the same thing that their Lord said? They call Jesus Lord. They call Jesus Christ. Well, if Jesus Christ called the white man the devil, then... Who, who's wrong? Is the Christian wrong or is the Muslim wrong? <laughs> I say it's the, the word Christian. of religion. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So Jesus said, you are a race of devils. You you are the children of Satan. I know you was not slaves in Egypt because the children of God was prophesied to be slaves. So, of course, you were not enslaved, devil, because you are the ones that will enslave the children of God in the future. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. In a country spiritually known or spirit that can be spiritually described as Egypt, a country that can be spiritually described as Sodom, that's the country you are in now. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, I got a yes, question. Is. is God the Lord? Yes, sir. No, God yes, is sir. God. Is God your Lord? Yes, yes sir. God, God is, is the God. Lord. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that means, I mean, I have a question. If God is the Lord, and we are his children, what, do, what does that make us? The children of the Lord. God is the Father. If, God, if, if we are the children of God and God is the Lord, what does that make us? A child of God. Turn to the 82nd chapter of the book of Psalms. I think that makes us Read the first read the first read the first verse of the eighty second chapter of the book of Psalms. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, he judges among the gods. Oh well according to David. There's more than one God. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Because David said, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. 
he judges among the gods. Ain't that right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Turn to the book of Revelation. Got it. One moment. Now turn to the uh turn to the nineteenth chapter. Got it. One moment. Read the fifteenth and sixteenth verse of the nineteenth chapter of Revelation, Rafi. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Is that not God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, if God is the king of kings, and if God is the Lord of lords, that means that if we are the children of God, if God is our father, then we are Lord, little L, like our father. We are gods, too. We are kings and queens, too. We are lords, too. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Did I, have I said something? That anybody in here disagrees with? Have I have I misspoken yet? No, sir. No, sir. So according to the book, God is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And according to the book of David, he stand he congregate he congregates with God. He congregates with his children. He congregates with his family. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. The children and family of God is a mighty people. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. If you are the child of God, you are what? A mighty person. Ain't that right? Yes, Yes, sir. Now, since we know that we are the children of God, and we we are lords like our father, Go back to the eleventh. Go back to the eleventh chapter of the book of Revelation, Rafiq, and re and reread the eighth verse. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. I have a question. Can any man on earth crucify the Almighty God? Is that even possible? No, sir. So no, sir. if the book of Revelation said that our Lord was crucified in a city called, especially known as Sodom in Egypt, then that couldn't have been the God of the universe. That had to be one of his children. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, one moment. <clears throat> now, Rafiq, turn to the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation and read the tenth verse. And hath made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. <laughs> now, according to the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 10. It's prophesied that God will make a certain people king, a certain people priest, and that this people will reign on the earth. Is that right? Yes, sir. Well, what does that mean? If you have a group of people that reign on earth, then that means that the other people will serve them because this people of God are the new kings and the new aristocracy, the new royalty. Do you understand? 
Yes, yes, sir. You can't reign over. You can't reign on earth if you're not reigning over nobody. If you are reigning, that means somebody is under you, under your authority. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just yes, Rebecca, do you do you own your house or do you rent from somebody? I rent from someone. What do you call the person that you rent from? Landlord. Yo, landlord. Is that right? Yes, sir. So don't don't be in don't be in my meeting looking all crazy because I tell you that God's people are lords when you call people that are not God's people Lord every day. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The chosen people of God. And it is prophesied that these particular people, this particular bloodline, will be the new kings and lords of the earth. And that means that the people of the earth will be serving them for eternity. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I'm teaching tonight. I'm teaching. I'm not going to yes, turn to are. it, but I know you I know y'all know this, the story. Do you remember the story of the of Joseph and his coat of many colors? Ain't that right? Yes, sir. What did Joseph tell his father, Sister Rebecca, in that dream? Did not Joseph tell his father in a dream that he seen the sun, the moon, and the stars bowing to him? Didn't he tell his yes, father sir. that? Yes, sir. And what did his father ask him? He said, boy, are you trying to tell me that me, your mama, and your brothers are going to serve you? Ain't that right? Yes, sir. And what his father and what did his father what did Joseph's father tell him? He said, Don't tell that to your brothers. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Why why did Joseph's father tell Joseph do not tell that to your brothers? Why was he told that? Anybody? It would make them jealous. It would make them jealous. Anyone else? I think that's I think that's a pretty good answer. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear you. I'm trying to fix me something to eat. Say that again. My question is when Joseph's father told Joseph, do not tell your brothers about that dream you had of the sun, moon and stars worshiping you and bowing to you, why did Joseph's father tell Joseph that? I think it has something to do with jealousy, and jealousy. and, and right? God talked God talked to 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 him and not his brothers. So if he wanted his brothers to know, they would have got the same dream. That's right. So Joseph's father told Joseph, "Don't tell your brothers that dream, because if you do." Basically, they gon' they ain't gonna like that. Ain't that right? That's right. Well, if Joseph had a dream from God that his mother, that his father, and that his and his siblings, his brothers and sisters, was gonna bow to him, that means that yep. Joseph was gonna going to be their king. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. that's right. And he did become that, their king. That, that means that Joseph was going to reign over them. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Then that means if Joseph was told by God that he's going to be his family's king and he's going to reign over his family, that means that God made Joseph the Lord. Yes. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. That's right. I'm about to just bring it all down. I'm about to bring it on home. Now, what happened in Africa 400 years ago? Did not the black people of Africa sell other black people to the white man into slavery? Yes, sir. Yes. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why, did, why did certain black people get enslaved and other black people did not? I'll tell you why. 
because when Jesus was here and when Moses was here, Egypt was a world power. Do you understand? Yes, sir. The black people of Egypt was a world power. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And if you look at the country of Africa, if you look at every other nation in Africa, whether you look at the Nigerians, whether you look at the South Africans, whether you look at the Pygmies, whether you look at the Rwandans, no matter what other people you look at in Africa, the black Egyptians were the most advanced and most wise black people in Africa. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Right. Well, if you are the richest, what other what other tribes in Africa got pharaohs? What other black people in Africa got tombs of gold that they buried their kings in? Not only were the Egyptians the most advanced and the wisest, the black Egyptians were the richest Africans there. Do you understand? Yep. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Do you suppose that if you are the smartest, wisest, and richest black people in Africa, do you suppose that the rest of your brothers and other tribes might be a little jealous of you? Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we all know, or you should know, that the Bible, that many chapters of the Bible was actually taken from the walls of the pyramid, the hieroglyphs. The word hieroglyph, hiero means holy. Glyph means writing. Hieroglyph means holy writings of Egypt. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. So many Hmm. chapters of the Bible, some of the songs of David was taken from the tombs of the pharaohs. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Now, the other black people in Africa that knew of the knowledge of Egypt, and they knew of the hieroglyphs, and they knew of the holy writings. The Egyptians knew, but the problem is the Egypt, the secret got out because the Egyptians knew that they were the chosen people of God to reign over all, not just reign over the black people of Africa. Those black people were to reign over all black people on earth. That is the destiny of those Egyptians. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Or the tribe of Shabazz. But I'm not going to get too deep. So it was prophesied in the hieroglyphs that the, 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 the Egyptian bloodline would be God's choice to be king, to be lords over all people on earth. That was the prophecy. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So what happened after Jesus? After Jesus was crucified, Jerusalem fell. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. sir. But guess who else fell? Egypt fell, too. Because the Arabs from the Middle East came into Africa and plundered Egypt and enslaved black people before the white man came. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I'm teaching. So what happened when Egypt fell? When the Arabs came and invaded Egypt and when other nations came and plundered and destroyed Egypt, the black Egyptians ran away. The black Egyptians ran to the west. The black Egyptians Mm -hmm. ran to the south and hid among the black people of Africa. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Because they were being being invaded from foreigners from the north, and they were being conquered. So they ran to their brothers throughout Africa. Do you understand? Yes, Yes, sir. The black people of Egypt ran to the other black people who, in the back of their mind, was a little bit jealous of them. Do you understand? Yes, sir. They did not like the Egyptians, and now 
the Egyptians were getting their butt kicked, so they kind of felt sorry for them, but they kind of didn't. They kind of was glad that they were destroyed because now they were in their countries seeking. They were now refugees under their authority. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. So then what happened? The white man came from Europe. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And the black people that were sold to the Europeans were the Egyptians among the tribes of Africa. They they sold those strangers. They sold those bourgeois niggas from Egypt to the white man. That's who got sold. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Think about it. Was Sister Rebecca... If she's going to sell a black person, if she's going to do it 400 years ago, is she going to is she going to sell her sister on the phone, or is she going to get somebody that's been getting on her nerves like Gabriel downstairs? Who is she selling to slavery? Gabriel downstairs. Downstairs. <laughs> you sell Gabriel, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> you would you would sell you would sell your sister. If, if if you if you're gonna sell a black person, you're gonna get that nigga that you that that, that you just that you've been getting on your nerves. Ain't that yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. So when the white man came to Africa, the black people that sold us, we was not in their family. We were amongst black people that hated us because they knew that God made us a promise. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. He promised us that we will be king, that we will reign over the earth. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Turn back to the 11th chapter and read the 8th verse again, Rafiq. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. What do you mean our Lord was crucified? Who is that talking? The Lord that was crucified in Egypt, the Lord that was crucified in Sodom, were those black tribal Shabazz, those black Egyptians in Africa that was prophesied to be the Lord. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remember, the punishment of crucifixion is a slow, torturous death. Do you understand? Yes sir. yes, sir. When Jesus was crucified, when allegedly crucified 2,000 years ago, he was hung on a cross, and he was up there with no food or water for three days. It, was, it is a slow, torturous death. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So what happened to the black people that got brought to America? The first thing that happened, they were packed on ships. And it took 90 days in the heat of a ship on the ocean to get here. A slow torture. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Then when the black people set foot on the shores of America, Sister Rebecca's son was sold to this white man. Sister Rebecca's sister on the phone was sold to this other white man in Georgia. Sister Rebecca's daughter was sold to this other white man in Mississippi. A slow torture. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Sister Rebecca's son is castrated. Sister Rebecca's daughter is raped throughout her life. Sister Rebecca's other son is hung on a tree. This went on for 400 years. A slow Hmm. torture. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yes. The black people of America was what? Crucified in America. Crucified. Ain't that right? That's right. Yes, sir. And still being crucified. Still. Read, the eighth verse. read the eighth verse again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So the Lord that was crucified in America, the Lord that was crucified in the country with that Egyptian money. The Lord that was crucified in a country where homosexuality was legalized. That Lord are the black people of America, God's people
people that he chose that shall reign on earth. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In other words, you and me. Yes, sir. The Lord that you happening. read about in the book of Revelation is yourself. Look in the mirror. The reason why you are in America is because the people in Africa hated you, and they still hate you today. Do you understand? Yes, sir. They hate you because they're not you. They hate you because they're jealous. Do you understand? Yes, Yes, sir. Just like Joseph, his father told him, don't tell that to your brothers, Joseph. Don't do that. And what happened when his brothers found out? They took Joseph in his beautiful coat of colors, and they threw him in a pit. Ain't that right? Dropped him in the well. Yep, sure did. And they, and, they poured, and they poured ghost blood on his coat of many colors. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Yep. And told his father, Joseph is dead. Ain't that right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. what they said. So what happened to the black people of America? Just like in the movie Roots. When the Africans got off the ship and they was praying, they were saying, Allahu Akbar. They were saying, Isalam Alaikum. But when the white man got through with us, we were saying, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so what did the black people of Africa say? Huh, Joseph dead. They don't serve Allah no more. That's right. He, uh, he, he, yes, got that, he, got that, he got that goat's blood on him. The white man ain't nothing but a bunch of goats. That's why the white man called his children kids. That's what goats yes, have, sir. kids. White people got yes, kids. Sir. Black people got children. Yes, sir. And that's exactly what happened to the black people in America. Look at all of us. We all spotted up. Some of us light skin, some of us brown skin, some of us red bones, some of us dark skin. We got many colors. We got that goat many colors. blood in we got that goat blood in us because the white man raped us for 400 years. So we are a mm-hmm. coat of many colors, and we are covered in the white man's blood, the white man's DNA. The white man's blood is in our veins. We are a coat of many colors stained with ghost blood, and we are dead. We don't serve the God of our fathers. We don't serve Allah. We serve Jesus Christ. We serve anything that the white man say to serve. We are Scientologists. We are Jehovah Witness. We are Mormons. We Seventh Day Adventists. We are Episcopalians. We Catholics. We every doggone thing but a Muslim. Everything but a Muslim. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. We serve one God, and that's Allah. And I'm not. Now, this, is fr- this is this is this is Friday night. I'm gonna cut it right here, but I had to, spe- I had to prepare a special dinner. For Sister, Rebe- Sister Rebecca's uh, guest. Well, right, thank Rafi, you very much. We, we want we want to we want to Rafi, uh, ask our guest if she have any questions. Would she like to make a comment before we close out? Yes, sir. Well, okay. I only have like one comment, and that is like I believe that there is only one God, and there's many nations, and that the 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 for God to love the world, he gave his son to show us how we can get out of this world and back into heaven where we need to be at. And as far as the races or the colors or whatever, it's just like I think I take it back to the weakest people are the strongest people, and only the strong survive, which is us, us black people. We are the strong ones. We were taken out from our homes and brought into a land of God, whatever this is, America. But yet we're still surviving. Not all of us will survive, but the majority of us will. And that's because we have the will of God in us and not the mind of man. Because once we get the mind of man, we forget who God is and we just go strictly by whatever man say that this is it. But where I come from, I was told to Timothy, study to show yourself approved and take no man's word for what God got to say. Listen to God. He speaks, listen. So my prayer for me and for all of us, as is my daily prayer, is Lord, bless these eyes that I see what you 
Father God, want me to see. Bless these ears that I hear what you, God, want me to hear. And put up on my tongue that I can speak your word, that I can touch somebody in my day to make them grow a little bit closer to you. And, Father God, touch our hearts so that we can learn love, the true word of love. Because once we become and to know what love is, we can love ourselves, our nations, and everyone around us. I believe that's what God wants. And to make them us stronger Christians, that we go out and testify what God has done for us. Not, I, I can't tell you what he's done for somebody else, but I can surely use me as a living testimony that God is real. And there is no other. And with that, I would like to say I am very blessed in this lesson tonight. I really enjoyed it, and I did hear a lot of stuff that I didn't hear. I shook my head no to a couple of things, but then when we got a little further, I'll go, oh, yeah, okay, that is true. <laughs> so it's like a lot, of, a lot of this is like a lot of common sense, a lot of book sense, and wisdom, which only comes from God. And I would like to thank you for letting me sit in on your lesson. And that's it. Sister, it is our pleasure to have you at this meeting. Well, thank you. Welcome, Francine. Yes, and I will do it again. But, Rebecca, you know you got to punch my phone because you know... (laughs) You know, I don't know what I'm doing with this phone, so you do have to call me and let me know when there is a lesson. I will be on them. And if you guys have any books or stuff like that that I can read, I would like to know where I can get that stuff, where I can read it for myself and get even a deeper, better understanding. Can you hear my voice, Ruffy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I I I have for the past uh, ten years going on now. I have prepared what I deem is a pathway to God. The books that I have written are books that you don't have to read. All of the all of my teachings, all of my books are audio visual. When I began mm-hmm. my mission, I had a con- I talked to a lot. And I said to Allah, I said, I know that black people do not like to read. So what I will do, so what I so what I told God I would do, I told God I will read to them and I will put your word in a manner that will entertain them as well as teach them to serve you. So mm-hmm. I have I have over four hundred books in the form of online video lessons. And Sister Rebecca will be sending you the links from the beginning so you can so you can uh learn what we know and walk the path and it's very simple and we go uh step by step by step. Just like the OJ say. Step by step. Okay. Step by step. Day by day, minute by minute. All right. Well, I will be looking for that. Sister Rebecca, I'll, I'll get with Sister Rebecca, and uh, the first, uh, the first, the, the first teaching, or the first lesson I ever done was called Black Messiah 2012. Okay. And, uh, that, and Sister Rebecca is going to be sending. She's going to be forwarding you the links and everything. There, there's no charge. It's all free and it's all online. And she'll be sending you the video links to our scriptural lesson, like just like the one you heard tonight. We we got Beautiful. we got plenty. Beautiful. I would truly appreciate it. All right. Can't know too much of God. It's, it's, not, it's impossible to know too much. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Good. All right, right. Well, Becky, right, thank right. you. Do we have any questions or comments before we close our Bible study? This was an uh, interesting meeting tonight, and I enjoyed everyone's reading 
and I enjoyed the Son of Men's lectures. And it was uh it was an interesting meeting with Francine. Sister Francine. Thank you. <laughs> mhm. Thank you very much. You guys made me feel very welcome. I like that. All right. Uh, I would like to thank the Son of Man for speaking to us today and giving us a lot of wisdom tonight. I would also like to thank the Son of Man for speaking tonight and also say I would also like to say that this was a great lecture given by him. Yes, sir. Thank you, Son of Man. I'd like to thank uh, everyone for their reading uh, Son of Man's lecture and welcome our new guest. Mm-hmm. If there are no other questions or comments, we will close this Bible study with the Muhammad children giving their Farad prayers and their meditations to Master Farad Muhammad, starting with Naeem. Surely I have turned myself, being upright to him, who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death all for Allah, Lord of the worlds. No associate hath thee, and this am I commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, but none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me to the best of morals, but none guides to the best of them but thee, and turns away from me the evil morals but thee. The Lord is my shepherd, I want not. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Surely I have seen myself being upright to him, who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not the polytheist. Surely my prayers, my sacrifices, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No soul should have me, and this is my commanded, and I am of those who submit. O oh, Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, for none grants protection against faults with thee. And guide me to the best of morals, <clears throat> for none guides to the best of them but thee, and turns away from me the evil morals with thee. The Lord is my shepherd. I want not. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. <clears throat> thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over me. Surely goodness and Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, and I dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Truly, I have myself being a part of you, coordinate the heavens and the earth, and I am all the public. Truly, my prayers and my sacrifices and my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the world. No associate has to eat, and this is my command, and I am a little children. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. For thou art the Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been adjusted to myself and I suffer from myself. So grant me protection against all my fault. For none brings protection against all the be or give me to the best of morals. For none lies to the best of them but be and turns away from me the evil morals but be. The Lord is my shepherd, I am one not. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path to righteousness for his same sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs with over. Surely, goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, and I dwell in the house of the Lord's servant. Amen. In the name of Allah, who appeared and is in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, as alaykum. Well, thank you, Salaam. Thank you, Salaam. <laughs>